vague writing is probably the most egregious, problematic kind of the dead giveaways we have. Vague writing can wreck a perfectly good essay, and we've seen it time and again. A paper that would score high is staying very low scoring because of vague writing. So what can we do to help instructionally? Well, the best thing I know to use is the intensity scale. This becomes a concrete way for students to recognize there is a range of specificity or clarity in their language. So we start with a line like a number line that we put vague on one end and crystal clear sharp on the other. I usually do this on a document camera the first time so that we can do one together as a group. We start with a word in the middle, like car. Because see, ordinary words are usually in the middle. A word like car, different readers could picture that mentally in different ways, but everybody still has a general understanding of what a car is. Down on the end where it's vague, a reader would not be able to picture that at all. It would be blurry, cloudy, and on the far right end, every reader who heard this would probably picture it about the same way. It would be clear and precise. So if we start with a word like car, I also like to use a question like, how'd you get to school today? My mom brought me in her car. How'd you get to school today? My mom brought me in her, what's another way you could answer that without saying car? Some ways more blurry and let the students help you think of ways that are more blurry and then ways that are more clear. And you'll end up with a scale that looks something like this. My mom brought me in her vehicle. She brought me in something <laughs> or she brought me in my grandpa's rusty 98 Ford F-150 truck. And you see the difference. Kids can see it concretely. All you need to do now is have them make their own intensity scale. And they can start with any word that you give them. Let's consider this paragraph. After school, Sean came to get me in his car. On the way to my house, we stopped at the store for a few things. And then we went home, ate, and watched TV. It was fun. In the reader's mind, it's a little blurry. In the writer's mind, they could picture every bit of it. So after taking some of this to the intensity scale and working through some changes, this could sound like this. After school, Sean cruised by the bus circle in his famous rusty red convertible and picked me up. On the way to my house, we stopped at Randy's Corner Market for our favorite snack combination, tortillas and fresh peanut butter. Then we went to my living room, turned on Comedy Club, munched down on our feast, and laughed hysterically for an hour. Just look at that before and after. And all of that change comes from bringing up in the student's head the awareness of the need for that intensity scale. Here's a, another thing you can do. Give students a paragraph and ask them to find the words that they could ratchet up on that scale. Young adults use technology for everything. You, you name it. Games, movies, shows, online activities. Technology gives you fast and easy videos to watch. Videos on schoolwork that you might need better understanding or how to make or do something. Video games, shows, and movies are always seen to cause humor, excitement, or scare. No wonder why teenagers enjoy watching or playing on technology. It's much easier and free everywhere you go. You see there are some grammar mistakes in this paragraph, but it is lifted right out of a student's writing on a state test. It scored low, and it's not because of the grammar mistakes. It's because of these questions in a reader's head. Every single one of these underlying parts could be ratcheted right up on that intensity scale and this paper would have scored much higher. 
Here's an original sentence. I didn't finish my breakfast. You could have some fun making it more vague and more precise. For practice, students could make their own intensity skills, and all you need to do is give them a piece of butcher paper or a piece of newsprint, a marker, a group maybe, and a word for the middle to start with. Or do some before and after sentences, and you have some wonderful experiences for them to remember about how to change words that are vague in the minds of a reader. Next, we'll continue with all of the rest of the dead giveaways.